Ta-da. Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Now, before I turn you guys around and give you the big reveal, let me just give you a very brief synopsis of what this video is all about. Quite a while ago now, I created a video and at the very beginning of it, I said, imagine if you could see what you wanted to see and not what you actually see. Wouldn't that be so much better? So, to clarify what I'm talking about there is, if you were quite proficient at post-production and in your mindset, you knew when you took a picture, what the picture would eventually look like once you've post-processed the image. So in other words, looking now, can I see what the final image will look like? If you can do that, of course, if that's your thing, it might well not be your thing. But if you can do that, then you'll certainly have a different outlook when you're out and about with your photography. So my intention here is once the tide has come in and the water is all around this boat, <clears throat> I'm going to try and find a composition, photograph it, and then turn it into my normal fine art style and remove everything in the background. Remove, I never add. So I'm going to remove the horizon, drop the sky down, maybe lose all the other bits and pieces. I might just keep it to a single boat I like the minimalistic feel. So my intention is in a fine art style, I like it when you say fine art style because you've got carte blanche to do what you want. I want to breathe life into that old relic. And talking about old relics, I'm fine, thanks for asking. I love this. There's a, an anchor point, not that it needs anchoring in any way, shape or form, but there's an anchor point, curly rope, leading lines um, I'd like to use them but I've got a funny feeling I'm not going to get a chance to which is a real shame but yeah that's nice I like that these are just little things that I pick up on I might go across to these boats across here we'll have to wait and see one thing I did fancy and that was that boat over there it's like the celestial dawn I photographed a Celestial Dawn in a fine art style quite some time ago as well. I'll leave a link up there. And in actual fact, I'll leave a link at the end of this video if you want to have a look at that video as well. Because uh, I'm quite proud of that video. I'm quite proud of those images. And those boats there look quite cool as well. So realistically, when you come to a place like this, it's just about getting your timing right in terms of, well, the weather and the tide, of course. Yeah, cool. I am really excited about this. Really, really excited. Look at that. I'll tell you what, that could tell a tale or two, couldn't it? Right, so this is where I'm at. Time at the moment is 10 past three. High tide is five o'clock, but already water is well and truly up to the boat. So it's looking likely that I don't have to wait until high tide. So I'm going to try and get down onto the shoreline as safely as I can. You always get a bit nervous when you look at all that muddy stuff. You think you're going to go down and get stuck in it and then drown when the tide comes in. <laughs> or worse still, just having to have help to get back out again. That's not good, is it? That's never a good look. <laughs> Apart from the fact that the rocks are slippery and I'm desperate for a wee, this is more of a challenge than I first realised. The rocks are very slippery and the only slight issue with this boat is very close to land. My 16 mil will take care of that, but it's very, very close to land. So that means if I get close to it and go really wide, I'm going to capture lots in the background. It'll be very meaningless 
That's what it's like when you shoot stuff in the background with a really wide angle lens, like a 16 mil for instance. But a lot more work than I anticipated. But we love a challenge, don't we? We love a challenge right now. Let's get across here and try not to slip on your ass. <laughs> So I just started a time lapse going for 30 minutes and I just had to recover my camera because the tide is coming so quick. That knot I mentioned literally 10 minutes ago about using is non-existent. So that obviously is out of the question now and I'm not entirely sure how high this tide comes up here. It's all wet where I am but of course it's been raining. Thankfully it's not raining now. but. Uh, yeah, I have an exit plan. That's the most important thing. <laughs> right, so what I'll do is I'll talk you through the very first one and show you in camera like I normally do, the best I can. Okay, let's throw you guys in camera. So I'm looking at something at the moment like that. Now, I wanna go lower down, but I daren't, but I'm guessing that water will come up to me. So I'm happy with that. Everything is level. I quite like the way it sits. I don't like the way that the front of the boat finishes right in the center of the frame. That point there, it's right in the center of the frame. And it makes me feel very uncomfortable. I can't come further out. So like I say, I think probably the best angle is if I go further to the right and aim the camera further to the left. Okay, so let's tighten everything off. I'm nice and level in camera. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to expose for the boat and take a sped up shot, uh, exposing all this, uh, all the front area of the boat here. See if I can make it slightly brighter. Yeah, so you can see there's a lot of detail, a lot of information on that boat there. So I'll take a shot and make it quite bright. Then I'll expose for the two minutes, add my 10 stop filter, and then take a second shot. So that way at least I've got all of the detail, that lovely gorgeous detail on that boat there. Right, let's go for it. So that's looking really nice. There's a couple of other things I want to address before I switch my camera back to photography mode. I better be quick because <laughs> the tide's coming right in. So the first thing I want to do is, um, I've got my polarizer on. I'm not really utilizing my polarizer much. I just use it to reduce the light down uh, that's hitting the sensor. But here it's quite dark. So I'm gonna turn my polarizer until it darkens the sky, but makes the floor, makes the sea. If you look he here, just gonna turn my polarizer until it brightens the sea up. So dark, bright there, okay? And also I'm gonna add a 0.9 soft grad because there's a lot more light in the sky and that boat in essence is in shadow. So let's put my 0.9 soft grad on the front of the lens, drop that in just on the sky and nothing else is to reduce that light down on the sky and that's giving me a sporting chance. So now I'm ready to set my camera up. Right, I'm happy with that. That's a great, great shot, I love that. Right, how low can I get this camera? Right, so now I've come further across to the right-hand side. I won't talk you through my setup again because it'll be exactly the same, but I'll show you my composition in camera. Oh, just make it nice and bright so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Might be a little bit shaky. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for something along those lines. Um, sticking with the rules of thirds, I'll have to level it up when I'm not videoing. I haven't got a level when I'm videoing. But I'm looking at something like that. It looks so much better when you photograph the boat 
from the front. It looks really, really intimidating. I'm gonna stick with the third C, two thirds sky. I like the movement that the sky is offering. So I'm gonna set everything up like that, but then I'm gonna drop it down. Maybe something like that. Just to add a bit more or include a bit more of that C. But at the moment, let's just keep everything like that. That's cool, I like that. This is brilliant because I've set my camera up and now the tide is getting higher and higher and closer to my filter bag, which is pretty much my limit. But this is exactly what I want. Camera as low onto the surface of the water as I possibly can. And from here, it's just awesome. A little bit of sunlight from behind me, lighting up the boat as well. I've grabbed a couple of shots like that. So of course, the good thing about that is I don't need to um, use two shots to combine them. You know, one a brighter shot and one a normal two minute exposure. And I've got to tell you at the moment, this is just delightful. From this angle across here, the boat looks really intimidating, really mean, really angry. And I love it. It's going to be one of the best, most picturesque boat wrecks uh, around. It really is so, so cool. I've not found a better boat wreck than this in England anyway. Certainly uh, better in Scotland, but not better down here. If you guys know any different, by the way, leave a comment down below. I think we all like a good boat wreck, don't we? I don't like doing this, but I'm going to do it all the same. I want to zoom in really close to that boat and just take a picture of that angry boat really really close and make it very dominant in the frame now what you must remember is and i always tell people this if you're going to take a picture of something like a boat wreck then you need to take a picture of a landscape with a boat in it and not just turn up point your camera at the boat and take a picture of the boat so it needs to be a landscape with the subject matter in it and not just a photograph of the subject matter and sometimes when you get a little bit close then you run the risk of your landscape with a subject in it just being a picture of the subject i hope that makes sense <laughs> Just before I move away from this gorgeous boat wreck, I might go down to the other boat wreck in a second, but just before I move away from this one, I've come up off the water's edge and I've taken an elevated shot looking down onto the boat. The clouds at the moment are pretty cool. So with a two minute or a four minute exposure, we're getting lots of movement in the cloud, which is really, really nice. The only slight problem with shooting from up here it means that the mast now is overlapping the background and it's a real ball ache to cut out. So if you did want to create a fine art image here, you're just making more work for yourself. It is still possible, of course, but you're just making more work for yourself. Oh. <laughs>